All right, so we've talked about how there are three routes to becoming a true owner. The law of capture, the law of custom, and lastly, the law of finders of abandoned property. And all three of these routes require that a person have what in property law we call possession of something before they can become the true owner. Now, intuitively, that may sound easy because you might think that possession is as simple as picking something up or holding something. And this is definitely true in a lot of situations, but sometimes it's not so clear, especially when you have more than one person going after the same thing. And we can call these types of individuals people who are all going after the same thing at the same time pursuers. And in these unclear situations, we can use the law of capture and the law of custom to figure out what you have to do to gain possession of something in order to become its true owner. So first, I just want to go over the law of capture. To make this a bit more concrete, I want you to imagine you're visiting a tide pool. And you might see a turtle, a seashell, some interesting rocks, maybe some starfish. And all of these things are found in nature. So in a sense, they're all free and they have what we call natural liberty, which means that they're not possessed by anyone. They have no owner. And we're going to use the law of capture to make you the true owner of one of these naturally free things. Okay, let's say you see a turtle wandering around the tide pool and you want to take it home with you and make some turtle soup. So you walk over to where the turtle is resting on a rock in the sun, rubbing your belly and smacking your lips only you want time to take a plastic bag out of your backpack. So you, so in order to buy time, let's say you pick the turtle up and you lay it on its back so its legs are flailing around and it can't run away. And meanwhile, as you're rummaging through your backpack, a little girl who wants to take the turtle home and make it her pet swipes the turtle from under you. So both you and the little girl want this wild turtle. So who should get it? Who has gained possession of the turtle? Now, you might, again, intuitively say that the little girl has gained possession because she physically took the turtle with her bare hands. But you could just as easily decide that maybe the turning over of the turtle onto its back was enough to say you had possession first. Or maybe even the fact you saw the turtle first. So the question is, where should we draw the line? How do we decide? What would you need to do to say that you had possession of the turtle in order to become the true owner? Well, that gets us to the law of capture. So the famous legal case, Pearson v. Post, tells us that in order to claim a wild animal on uninhabited land, the following three things must be true. First, the pursuer must manifest an unequivocal intention of appropriating the animal. All this means is that you have to actually show the world or demonstrate to the world that you want to take the turtle for yourself. And anyone watching might think from the way that you're making a beeline over the turtle, over to the turtle while rubbing your stomach and smacking your lips that you look hungry and that you intend to take the turtle home for dinner. But the little girl also, uh, she also ran directly toward the turtle and she actually picked it up and ran away with it. So she also acted in a way that makes us think that she wanted the turtle too. So it looks like you've both satisfied this first element. So double check for both. Second, the pursuer must deprive the animal of natural liberty. And this means that you have to rob the turtle of its freedom. And we learn from Pearson v. Post that this might include things like wounding or maybe capturing the animal in a cage. You could argue Um, for yourself, that by turning the turtle onto its back, you've deprived him of his natural freedom because he can't run away, he can't move, and he's sort of at your mercy. But on the other hand, from the little girl's perspective, she could argue that you didn't deprive him of his liberty because he was still in the tide pool, and maybe he can muster up the strength to turn over and hop back into the water. So maybe you only get a single check. And the little girl, on the other hand, she physically picked him up and she ran away and she removed him from his home and made it very difficult for him to escape. So it looks like she's done more a more thorough job of depriving the turtle of his natural liberty. So she gets a double check. Third, 
the pursuer must bring the animal within his certain his or her certain control and since wounding or caging the animal will bring it under the pursuer's control we can see how these elements actually overlap the same facts that satisfy the second element can also satisfy the third element and this is also the most intuitive element right the idea that possession means that you have control over something. So you could argue that the turtle was within your reach and you made sure that he couldn't run away and so that should be enough to show that you had certain control. On the other hand, the fact you left a good looking turtle out in the open in a tide pool with lots of other people around and the fact that the turtle might flip over and swim away or the fact that you hadn't yet secured the turtle in your bag, these things might all weaken your argument, especially given the fact that the little girl was able to swoop in and take the turtle away from you. So single check for you, double check for the girl. So from the facts I gave you, we had to decide whether or not you behaved in a way that the law of capture from Pearson v. Post tells us um, amounts to possession or what property law sometimes likes to call occupancy. It's just another term for the same thing, the same idea. Now, both our turtle example and the fox hunt in Pearson v. Post, they both involved wild animals on uninhabited land. But you can actually stretch this doctrine to apply to inanimate objects too. So for example, a t-shirt thrown out into a crowd by Lady Gaga at one of her concerts is technically naturally free because it's been abandoned and we can say that it, it no longer has an owner since it's been thrown back into the natural liberty pool. Imagine a big concert audience with tons of people fighting for possession of this t-shirt. This kind of situation where you have lots of people trying to gain possession of the same thing is going to make us want a clear rule to help us decide who gets possession. And so even for this t-shirt, we'd have to, we may have to satisfy the requirements of Pearson v. Post to become its true owner. So you see, these laws can apply to living and non-living things that are free things that you might want to capture. So to sum up, to become a true owner, you have to have possession. When it's unclear who has possession, and when there are multiple people claiming to have possession, we can apply the law of capture, argue both sides, and then decide which side of the argument comes out in favor for one pursuer over the other. And then once we decide which person behaved in a way that gives them possession, we have our true owner. So in this case, based on what you know about the law of capture, who got the turtle? In my opinion, I think that the little girl wins.